Hello. Okay. Um, this one is going to be about my animals. Alright, I will start with the non-American ones and then go into the American ones. Um, okay. Tell us how you got all of your critters. Alright, so I have three right now, but in my lifetime I've had five different cats. My, um, my heart kitty, it was Ellie. She was a beautiful black cat and we had her when we lived in Miami. She moved up to, um, I got her at Publix <laughs> out of a box and she was one of a few. Um, okay, so we moved up to Georgia and, uh, and then she moved all the way up here to North Carolina with us. And she was very much the huntress. She would bring me back lots and lots and lots of presents all the time. I especially loved it when she brought me back baby squirrels. Always fun. Um, she passed away. It's almost been two years now. And she was almost 19. I miss her a lot. She was a cool cat. Uh, yep, she got to the point where she would just sleep. Sleep all the time. She was an old lady. She ignored everybody else. Um, my second kitty was Binks. He is kind of like my savior kitty. He helped me keep grounded during that very dark time in my life. He's six now. I think he's going to be seven soon. Um, he's very round and fat and loving. There's Lucy. Hey, Luce. Um, And then there's Lucy, who has graced us with her presence. Loose. Oh, she's like, I don't like anybody ever. <laughs> she's so cute. She's so weird. The only person she likes is me and Matt. She lets my friend Crystal pet her sometimes. Um, I don't know what her deal is. She is terrified of everybody and everything. She's been that way her entire life. And I haven't treated her any different than any of my other cats, obviously. Um, okay, but Binks I got at... I got him at a vet, actually. He was rescued, and someone brought him there, and the vet took him. And when, and when I went to get him, I was like, I need a kitty. No, 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 no. And I went and looked at all these cats that they had in the back, and um, and I walked by this one cage, and this cat sticks his paw out at me and smacks me in the arm. So, <laughs> of course, I had to take that one. <laughs> he had huge ears, and I was afraid he was never going to grow into his body. Well, he overgrew his body obviously, since he's 20. He's lost weight. He's only 22 pounds and something. Um, so there's Lucy, and Lucy came with a brother named Pete, but Pete got eaten by a coyote. Um, and then there's the little shithead, also known as Little Bitty. He is right there. Say hi, Little Bitty. Um, it's actually Lucy's spot to sleep, but Little Bitty has recently claimed it by beating the crap out of her to get it. He's totally awesome, let me tell you. Uh, but I can't give him away because Matt loves him for some reason. I love you too, you're just a pain in the ass. Alright, um, Chico. Do I hear updates on Chico at all? I actually have not heard anything about Chico in a couple months. Um, as weird as it sounds, I get feelings from Chico every once in a while and actually just a couple days ago I got one of those feelings again. It was almost like he's reassuring me so that I know he's okay but I have a hard time thinking about him. Um, in a way I feel like I helped him but I also failed him and I know he's doing good and I know he's over there and he's helping kids but I can't get that visual of that look he gave me. Um, when I loaded him on that trailer, and he was such a good boy loading on the trailer, and before he was terrified of trailers, and I guess it showed me how much I had helped him, he just walked right on the trailer and let me tie him up like it was nothing, but I closed the door, and I guess he, he knew that I wasn't leaving, and he just turned around and gave me this look where he was so confused, and I start crying every time I talk about it, but, um, he just, he was so confused, and I, I worked really hard to comfort him before then so but I do get feelings from him every once in a while that he's okay so I have to go by that um alright 
thought I'm crying. How ridiculous is that? Okay. Do, 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 do. Riding. How did I get into riding? Um, I didn't get into riding until I moved up here when I was about 13. Um, actually, I took a riding lesson in Miami, but it's in Miami, and it, it's hot, and I didn't like the sweaty horses, and I felt bad. So we came up here, and I started riding with my sister, actually, at the same time. I was always that person, because I was always the older one who got thrown on the horses who were stupid. Um... It was just an interest. I didn't do anything else in high school or anything, so when I came... Oh, I was 14. I had to have been 14 when I came here. I was 14, yeah. So, um, it was my it was my thing I did while I was in high school. It was my sport, I guess. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where do I see my life in five years riding-wise? I split that up because there was two parts to that. One was career-wise and one was riding-wise. Riding-wise, I want to have confidence. If I have confidence in what I'm doing, that will satisfy me. Right now, I lack confidence in riding so much and I hate it because I feel like it holds America back as well. Um, it says, show us your most prized possession. I don't know that he's a, I really think of him as a possession, but I think my most prized possession would be America. Really. Um, I think, I think because of my upbringing, I really never prized anything, because uh, I never got to keep anything, even my pets. Um, all my stuff was always thrown away, or we moved and never got it, or some sort of depressing crap like that. So I never really learned to prize anything, um, but I did learn how to be a collector of crap. Mm -hmm. I got that down to a science. Um, so I would say my most prized possession is America. Which you guys have seen like 400,000 times. What is my horse story? Um, I would say uh, this goes right along with. Oh no, not really. Okay. Um, what is my horse story? My horse story is with America. Um, Danny, when Danny moved up to Kirkpatrick. Um, they needed more lesson horses, and she knew of America because she worked, um, he was one of the trail horses. Well, he wasn't one of the horses that the people rode, he was one of the horses that the trail guides rode, um, down in Hilton Head. Well, they were totally screwing with him, and they were frying his brain, and she was like, well, you know, I think he would be a good lesson horse, and, um, she brought him up here. Well, it turned out that he wasn't the best lesson horse. Um, anyone who's ridden him knows he does not have the best gates. Um, he really is a confirmationally retarded, um, and he gets, he gets scared sometimes by the stupidest stuff. Well, he dumped a kid or two, just because his trot is not the most comfortable, and especially then he was, he had no muscle, um, so it was even worse. Um, so they were gonna send him back, but I had already fallen in love with him. Like, I saw him, and I loved his personality, and I just had this this thing, this connection, oh, hello, it's nice to see you, um, this connection, this, this feeling about him, and I just, I don't know, I just knew that he was, that I just, he was different from any other horse, I guess I just knew that, and, um, so I asked him, I was like, you know, can you convince her to keep him if I, if I lease him, um, so somehow that worked out and I started leasing him and I leased him for over two years before I bought him and we learned a lot together. We learned, um, even with his wacky gates, he was teaching me how to canter and I took him to his first show, which he did it really well in considering that he's never been to a show even though he got over two jumps. <laughs> um, he was just, he's just a different horse. He's, um, he's quirky, and his name fits him. Derpy just really fits him really well. Um, he sometimes freaks out about the stupidest stuff, but he's never dumped me. Not once. He saved my ass quite a few times, actually, because I'll ask him to go over a jump that he's not prepared to go over, and he's like, holy crap. He jumps over it huge. Um, he, like I said, he's 
conformationally retarded. He has extremely upright legs and a club foot. And I have to work really hard to keep him in shape. And, um, and I don't mind him one bit. Um, what's it like finally owning my soul pony? And then I got another one. What's it like finally owning America? I love you guys so much for paying so much attention and, and noticing how long I waited and how much patience I had before I finally was able to buy him because it probably it was probably one of the most important days in my life. Um, I absolutely love, I love finally owning him. I love having um, learned all that I have in the past couple months on nutrition, on, I mean, just on feet in itself, on riding properly, on how everything I do affects what he, how he is uh, mentally and physically. I love every aspect of it. I don't mind spending money. I don't mind spending the extra money it costs to keep him on this very hippie natural diet. I love it, and I can't wait to see the outcome of it in the spring. And his body likes it. It just, I, I love every aspect of it. Um, how I guess I kind of answered that. How did I know America was my soul pony? It was just, it was a thing. Like, it was like a feeling inside that just said, this is your pony. You know, this is, this is your dude. And, uh, when you're willing to go through all of the, the hard parts of dealing with whatever quirks that horse has, I was, I've been more than willing. Like, his feet are difficult. Um, I may even take his shoes off, I don't know. But, I mean, it's just, I guess it's just a thing. A feeling. I just knew. Uh, no, 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 no. my goals with America, um, I have, I really can honestly say I don't have super sticky goals for America, like, I don't have to do anything, I kind of listen to what he tells me he wants or does not want to do, and I kind of go with that, within reason, because if he's just being a brat, he needs to get the hell over it, um, but what I would like to do is one of my goals is all I want to be able to do is canter jumps. I want to be able to canter a jump course. And I would love to be able to show in one jumper show and just see how it is and go from there. Like, I just want to do one and see how it is. Um, where do you see you in America going in the future? I see his happy chestnut butt sitting in my backyard. That's where I see us in the future. Um... It really, I, I, I'm i not competitive, and while I do love showing, the amount of nervousness I get before shows kind of tells me that maybe showing is not for me. Um, I get really nervous, and I think because I'm getting older, I'm very aware of um, the consequences of falling off, so I don't push it a lot. And I can't, I don't have insurance, I can't afford to fall off, I can't afford to break anything, so I, end, I tend not to push a lot. Um, yeah. Mm. Where do you ultimately see yourself in America competing, pleasure riding? Um, ultimately, like I said, I would like to do one or two um, shows. I, I don't really care. Like, I don't, it's just, I don't really care about competing that much. It's just not in me because my thing with America is our own goals being accomplished. Um, I don't need to compete against other people in order to get that because we're both very quirky and we both have such individualized things that accomplishing our own goals is more important than accomplishing our goals against other people. If that makes any sense whatsoever. It probably doesn't, but it makes sense in my head. <laughs> um, I'm sure in the long run we will end up being those old people and old horses that go bareback trail riding down trails, um, bridleless, and I'll be old and haggardy and I can't walk, but I'll be riding him. <laughs> uh, nah, 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 nah. I think that's all of them. Yeah, I think I have anything else I'll add in the next one.